Hey guys, it's Alex here from Homie. In today's video, we're going to take a closer look at advanced device settings within Homie. So some of you might be wondering, how do you tweak or adjust some settings on your smart device? And actually Homie has a special area where you can do this. And depending on the device you have connected, uh, what kind of technology is it running on, what kind of manufacturer developed it, well, that all kind of comes into play for what options you have available for a certain device. The aim of this video is actually just to show you where you can find this information and how do you adjust it to fit your smart home. So let's dive straight into it. So we're here in the Homey app on the devices screen. Now let's long press on the device I'm looking to change some settings for. In this case, the Fibaro motion sensor. Now in the top right, you'll see a little settings wheel and we can tap on that. This will bring me to a place where you can change, for instance, the device name. You can change the zone it's in. You can change the status indicator that's displayed on your device's screen or on your home screen if you have it as a favorite device. You can also choose an icon. And last but not least, you can, well, tweak some advanced settings. So let's take a look in that. Now, depending on the manufacturer and brand of a certain device, you'll have a different set of advanced settings here. Some devices don't give you any advanced settings. You can't tweak them at all. Others give you a few, and some, like this Fabaro motion sensors, gives you a whole bunch. You'll see that for the motion sensor, we have things like sensitivity, motion sensor blind time, you have cancellation delay, and you can change all these things to your liking. You can make the motion sensor more sensitive, less sensitive, and basically tweak it until you find that perfect setting. Now we also have things like, well, um, the temperature LED. So if you're familiar with the motion sensor for Fabaro, and if, if you're not actually, I have a whole video on an overview of different motion sensors in the smart home. So go take a look at that. I'll put a link up here in the top right. But if you're familiar with it, it also shows a color when motion is sensed, if you want it to. And this color ranges from blue to green to red. And you have two thresholds. You have a lower end, so when it's colder than, in this case, 18 degrees, it's blue. If it's between 18 and 28, it's green. And if it's above 28, it's red. Let's go in and tweak, for instance, the lower spectrum. Maybe I want this to be 20 degrees, because if it's below 20 degrees in my home, well, I find it a little bit chilly. And if it's above, well, let's say 25, then I want it to show a red indication. And this is just a really nice way. Let's say you're coming back from work or you're waking up in the morning and you're walking past the motion sensor. It displays a color. Is it blue? Okay, well then it's a little bit chilly in the home. Is it green? Well, then it's a nice temperature. And if it's red, well, it's a bit too warm. Now, we also have a few more settings. Tamper alarm settings. Basically, you can enable or disable LED notifications based on that. You can have the LED brightness. You can change that. So there's a bunch of things you can tweak here. I'm not going to go into all of it because then this video is going to become very long. But for now, I've changed the temperature settings for that LED. So let's go ahead and save this. Now you'll see that the settings will be saved during the next automatic wake up of this device. This might take a while. You can also activate the learn mode in order to basically, well, get these settings into the device manually. And actually, that's what I'm going to do. So I know for this Fabaro motion sensor that the learn mode is activated by pressing on the button here at the back three times, right? And you might remember that during pairing of this device, you press it three times and then you press it three times again to pair it. So just pressing it three times once puts it into learn mode. Let's do that. So you'll see the LED flash is blue. It's now in learn mode. And if everything went to plan, Home is now sending the new set of settings to this device. So it's really that simple. Now I've got some tweaked settings uploaded into my Fibaro motion sensor. Now I should state here that if you're unpairing a device from Homey, it will revert back to its factory settings or often revert, it depends a little bit on the device and manufacturer, but normally it'll revert back to its factory settings. So when you're pairing it up again, then you might need to go in and tweak these again to the settings you had or maybe slightly different, whatever you want. Now, just as an example, I want to go in and show you some other devices just to give you a little taste of, okay, advanced settings and what they look like for different devices. For instance, I have the Akara motion sensor. It's a bit of a simpler device. It's also a lot cheaper. I'm going to head up into the settings here, head to advanced settings, and then we'll see that we have, well, a lot less settings to tweak here. I have the disable motion alarm after 
a certain value. So right now that's 300 seconds, which is five minutes. You can actually go in and tweak this. So if you want, for instance, the motion alarm to be active for a longer duration, then you can make, well, uh, choose the amount of seconds you'd like this to happen. It also tells you here in the description, if you can read it, it's relatively small, but the minimum value is 60 and the maximum value is 86, 86,400 seconds. So you can go in and tweak it within that range. Let's take a quick look at the door window sensor from Akara and head in again to the settings. Uh, no, don't remove the device. Head into the advanced settings. And then here you can get, well, a couple of things. So for instance, you can exclude this device from zone activity if you want to. So if this door window sensor, well, you want to purpose it for something else, then you can exclude it from zone activity and use it specifically for that and not have it interact with some zone activity flows you might have running. You can also reverse the contact alarm logic. Now, this is interesting. I had a couple questions come up about this from users. Hey, how do I do this? I have a door window sensor, but I don't want it to basically say active when the two sensors are apart, but I want it to be active when they're together and then inactive when they're apart. Well, in this case, you can reverse that logic right here. Now let's go in and try this out. I'm gonna reverse the logic and save this. In this case, I don't have to do anything with the device. The settings are immediately saved. So let me head back here and let me just pull this up next to the phone. Now, if I remove them, you'll see that nothing happens on my device screen. Let's put them back together. Now you'll see that the contact alarm has triggered. So what the device is saying is that it's active or at least the contact alarm went off and you'll see that the zone up here on the top right is also active. So my film studio zone is now active. Now let's pull them apart and now it's inactive. So this is exactly the reverse of what it usually does. And depending on where you're using this door window sensor, that might be exactly what you want to do. So go into advanced settings, tweak it up to your liking, and then you can use it just like this. Now I have a couple more devices that, well, are gonna be really quick because they don't really offer many advanced settings. Let's take a look, for instance, at this IKEA Strybar remote control, all right? And long hold, settings, advanced settings, and you'll see that, well, all I can do here is basically enable the battery alarm. So I'm gonna enable the battery alarm for this device. Now, bear in mind that not all devices report battery status accurately to Homey. So it's not always accurate when you're getting a battery notification, but this is always a nice thing to have just in case when this reports a low battery, then at least I'm notified of that. So I can save that and you'll see that the settings were saved. Now, if extra steps are needed in order to save the settings to a device, like with the motion sensor for Fibaro, you will be prompted and you'll see that immediately. So you're able to act on it and make sure that the settings are actually, well, consistent across and your changes are actually carried out on the device. Now, last but not least, let's take a quick look at this wall plug from Fibaro. I know this is quite a popular device in the smart home world because, well, they work quite well and they report energy. So let's have a quick look at the settings here and head to advanced settings. And then you'll get, well, uh, various options that you can go in and tweak. So you'll see that you can, for instance, set the setting for always on or you can go in and change the report interval. So this is actually how often the smart plug reports its energy meter. So maybe you want this to happen more often if you want a more accurate display or reading of the real-time energy usage. Now you can also, for instance, change the LED notifications. Let me just pull up the smart plug here. I've got the Sonos plugged into it at the moment, but you'll see that it has an LED display, right? You'll see the color of the smart plug. Now what you can do here is actually, well, change the color to your liking. You can change it continuously. You could change it in steps or just change it to a certain color. So let's say I want red. And if I hit save, you'll see the color of the LED change to red. So it's really that simple. Let's head back in. Let's go back to color. Maybe I want it to be, well, let's choose magenta and hit save and then you'll see it changes to magenta. So really you can go in and tweak your devices to your liking. So that was it for advanced device settings. It was really that easy. You just go into the device and you select the settings icon in the top right, 
Head to advanced settings and then go in and change things to your liking. It might take a little bit of trial and error to figure out what really fits for you, but it's worth putting in the time and effort to really set up a device to best suit your needs. And you can also well, make a few tweaks that might extend the battery life of a device. So if you want things not to report as often, if you want, for instance, the motion sensors, blind time or timeout to be a little bit longer, well, you can go in and tweak these things and they'll have impact on the battery life of your devices. I also want to say that I take no responsibility for the changes you guys make to your advanced settings here. If you go in and change things and then it suddenly is not acting like you want it to, well, I take no responsibility. This is just a tip for those of you that want to go in and tweak some things. Basically, this is where you can find advanced settings. I'm not saying that you should go in and change them, but maybe you want to. If you have questions about advanced device settings, make sure to leave them down in the comments below or head to our community forum or our app store, get in touch with the uh, developer of the app for the devices you're trying to tweak. And I'm sure they'll be able to help you a little bit further if it's really some detailed questions. Otherwise, well, if you enjoyed it, like this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.